Hi, I'm Billy. And I'm Monique. And we are so excited to be here together to launch Mango's first ever podcast series, Mango Encounters. This is Mango Encounters, a sound space that promotes enriching connections and candid conversations around fashion, culture, and wellness today. In this episode, we welcome Monique Dale and Billy Batia. I'm Billy Bartia. I'm Fashion and Beauty Features Director at Stylist Magazine. I'm in charge of cultivating all of the fashion and beauty trends in the magazine and having my finger on what is hot and new now. I'm Monique Dale. I'm a stylist from London. Um, I write a few fashion columns and I have one for who, what, where. I also dabble a bit in fashion design and interiors. Billy and I know each other from work, so with our jobs, we go to a lot of events and Billy just has the, the most like brightest personality. Aww, um, so I have not let go of her ever since. And the feeling is very mutual. We're stuck together like glue now. Yes. So we are going to dive straight in to autumn, winter 2022 trends and talk about what is happening in the world of fashion and what we are super excited to be wearing this season. So I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's been this big shift into a real party mood in dressing. Yeah, We have had a dark couple of years. There's been a lot of leggings, a lot of sweatpants, and we are coming out the other side brighter, bolder, and better than ever. Yes, And some sequins, some mini skirts, some thigh-high splits, some satin dresses, the whole shebang. Like, this is a party season. I'm not actually a kind of, I'm not really a party girl. But I am excited to wear the party trends. I'm excited to kind of get into those feathers, the sequins, you know, all the glitz um, and do it more in my casual way. Kind of working it into like my daily wardrobe um, and trying to have a wardrobe that works all day instead of a you know, one for the morning and one for the evening. Totally. Um, And I think it is because you're right, because we were so like strictly at home and, you know, all those clothes seemed wasted. And now you can go outside and you can express yourself a bit more. Um, I'm kind of steering away from those kind of more muted tones. And I've actually surprised myself with the amount of sequins I've got so excited about. Yeah. But I think it's more like, it's like the sequin and party style stuff, definitely. But it's that element of getting dressed up again, Mm. whether that's like head to toe green, like your suit today, or head to toe red, or it's being bolder, I guess, in your fashion choices. There's, you know, amazing, amazing outerwear, like these big bomber jackets and like, you know, coats with big shoulder structures. It's just, everything is just stepped up into this kind of more joyful lens of getting dressed. Yeah, it definitely feels more fun. I feel more fun this season. I feel like I'm more confident. I want to show people, you know, because it's fashion is a way of expressing who you are. It's the first way that people get to know who you are before you've even spoken. Absolutely, yeah. So, yeah, I, I am going actually going for trends this time and like you said doing a whole head to toe look like there's nothing nicer than a whole head to toe tonal one I know Mango so just brought out a full green look um I think it was like a pea green jacket and matching skirt um and I looked at it and I thought yeah I can do that and and I guess like we have seen this before a lot of um what people have been talking about is how this is mirrored the sort of roaring 20s that happened after the prohibition, like this real infection of joy back into getting dressed. And, you know, some of that means re-looking at trends that we grew up with, like mini skirts. Yeah, so mini skirts. I feel like I, every few years, I fall back in love with them. Um, and I, I remember my first mini skirt was probably at a school disco, probably a bit short <laughs> for that. how old I was. But every time someone brings up mini skirts, I I, I go straight back to that time. Um, but it was so like joyful. I was, you know, I felt so nice in it. And then I remember probably about five years ago, I fell in love with another mini skirt, which was Mango. It was like this houndstooth jacket and oh, nice. skirt set it was amazing very like clueless Cher vibes yes that's exactly <laughs> what it was I even remember putting a reference picture up when I posted it you know my, you I read in my mind um and I, I I fell in love with it so I wore the jacket and the matching skirt and I wore it with um 
a knee high suede boot, which had a bit of a heel. Whereas now I'm going to do the same style, you know, that, that, that little mini skirt with probably something oversized on top. Yeah, but, nice. Yeah, really, really cool. But with, I think the boots are more kind of chunkier, those really flat, yeah. big welly biker boots. Way easier to walk in. Yes. You so can do much. all day in those boots. I used to wear this rah-rah skirt that I was obsessed with, with these like skater trainers because I was trying to impress all the skater boys. But I'm excited to get back into mini skirts now in like a grown-up. Way. Yeah, it's just evolving with your style and your lifestyle and making it work for you now. Yeah. But a very exciting time to slightly be a little bit nostalgic. Yeah, there's so many options now and I love it like with a really thick tie in winter. I, I like even see, I've seen people layer it with like wide leg trousers. Like it's it's just a cool, it's a cool piece. So would you say that you're a nostalgic dresser or like a more forward looking dresser? So I like to do a bit of both. I might bring a trend like the mini skirt yeah. and how I used to feel about it. But I'm going to style it differently. I'm going to style it differently to work for my lifestyle. Like obviously now I'm a mum yeah. and I'm going to be doing the, the, you know, the nursery pickup and I can't wear a high heeled boot. Some women do, and they look amazing doing yeah. it. It's not part of my life anymore. <laughs> um, so I'll be doing it, you know, the new way for me, which is with that really chunky, big boot um, and a few other new staples that, you know, I've kind of got at the start of the season. And I think it's really important to, like, build that capsule wardrobe at the beginning of the season. And mine is always it's always the same things, and either they get, like, a little refresh or I see a different colored version of it, but it's always it's always a roll neck. Mm. There's always a white shirt. There's always a tailored trouser. And this season, I'm super into this like skinny tailored trouser with like a little zip at the bottom, so you get like a flash of ankle. Yes. So will you have that open? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then what shoe are you going to wear with that? Well, I feel like in the evening I would do like a pointed slingback. Yes. Uh, and Mango have the best pair that I've seen on everybody. I got them today. Did you? Yes. They're amazing. I need them. I okay, need them you definitely with those do. Trousers. Um, and then like a chunky trainer in the day yes. with a roll, with that roll neck or a you, shirt. You do that really well. That white shirt, like tailored trouser trainer. I feel like that's your uniform. It is my uniform. I just think it's, it, I feel dressed and comfortable. And I don't think you can feel confident in anything that you're doing unless you feel comfortable. And for me, that's like, they're the foundations of my capsule wardrobe. It's like, what makes me feel comfortable? That is literally my same motto. I will not wear something if I feel uncomfortable in it. I hate the thought of sitting there and pulling something up or trying to keep it tucked in or anything mm. like that. I want to wear stuff that, yeah, it's important to for me to, you know, have those trends, you know, but... It's more important for it to work for my lifestyle. Yeah. And while I'm running around from A to B, like our lives are so busy and it's amazing that we're busy, but I need to know that the wardrobe is going to stay on. It's got to support you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. What are like the non-negotiables in your capsule wardrobe? So capsule wardrobe is a few pieces of clothing that you can mix and match with kind of trend pieces and basics so that you might have a 12 piece capsule wardrobe and you might be able to make 30 different outfits out of it yeah um, they're your foundations aren't they your building blocks yes definitely and then you add in all of those exciting trend pieces to those building blocks yes exactly so at the beginning coats are my weakness you, I, you do a coat so well I, I just feel like a coat always steals the limelight because majority of the time we're wrapped up in it yeah um, and everything else is hidden so I always feel like the coat has to be a good one so for autumn winter Starting off in autumn, you need a trench coat. A greens. A greens. You have to have a trench coat. Either a trench coat or, or a duster, like the camel duster you're wearing today. It's such a good one. It's such a good one. Because it's light, but yeah. it's not like... It, it's, it's, a really, it's actually a really good layering piece, which sounds weird for a coat. But, it, but like, I, feel, I feel like in leggings and a hoodie on an airplane, mm. I'd feel really chic. Yes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> These are the pieces. Like A good coat will dress up no matter what you have on exactly. underneath. Like it's it's such a powerful piece that you have to really kind of consider it and how you're going to wear it and how it's going to fit with your lifestyle. So a good long coat is always key. Then I would also say a, a good casual one, like you said, Billy, about these really oversized puffer jackets. Mm. Like when it's 
we're, we're in London when it's raining, which is most of the time. Yeah. And I'm either running to the tube or I'm running to drop off the baby at nursery. I need something that I'm not too delicate about. Um, and I can throw on with anything I'm wearing. So I think two coats, like you said, Billy, a, a really good shirt, oversized shirt. Um, I'm kind of going back into leggings. Yeah, leggings are having a moment. I think so. I'm intrigued about the ones with the zips, like yeah. looking for something like that. Or maybe a stirrup. Yeah, I'm into it with a court shoe. Yes. It feels quite like 80s power. Yeah. But it but it's cool again. If if I've got, you know, an oversized t-shirt or sweatshirt, some leggings, and then I'm pulling on my big biker boots and either a, a trench coat or the bomber in the morning, at seven o'clock in the morning when I'm getting baby ready do the nursery drop off then I run on the tube then I've got a meeting and then I could have a lunch or a dinner with someone it's that kind of look that you can wear all day yeah I don't want to be fussing around and being like I'm not dressed up for me I will wear the same clothes all day and then I might put lipstick on if I'm meeting someone yeah yeah that that's where I draw the difference and I really like that way of getting dressed now where it's I think that morning and evening thing has really shifted to be like, right, what is what is going to be my armor for the day and see me through however many instances and circumstances I've got coming up, like whether that's the the run for you in the morning and then X, Y and Z in the day or I've got to go to like an event in the morning and then I need to be comfortable enough to like write a thousand words in the office. Then I've got to go to a dinner and then I, I don't know, I might go to a party afterwards. So I need, <laughs> I need something that's those foundations that will allow me to kind of be comfortable and confident and feel good in myself throughout all of those points in the day. Yeah, your your life is very much so like one meeting, different places. You are running from A to B a lot, aren't you? Yeah, but I really use I think I really use accessories to like marker those different points in the day. So in the morning, I don't know, it's like I might put a cap on and feel like, okay, active, you're going to do this. And then there's like a chunky pair of earrings for like lunchtime. And then when I, I can't actually, I can't leave the house without a hoop. That's like my non-negotiable. What, what size of hoop are we talking? Like a, like a medium, chunky hoop. Mm. And that that is like, I think that's how I use accessories, like the, to make you feel dressed. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if I'm, if I'm doing like, I don't know, I chuck on dress in the morning with trainers and then it's, I move them into a boot in the evening and throw on a pair of hoops and maybe a chunky necklace. That's, it's, you've not done much, but no. you've completely changed like how you feel in that outfit and what you're then ready to tackle wearing so those things. When you leave the house, you're wearing your outfit, yeah. but in your bag, you have a pair of heels for a maybe party, which yeah. you probably will go to. <laughs> and then you have a pair of earrings and a necklace. Will you wear the earrings and necklace together? Yeah. I'm a bit of a magpie though. Like I'm a more is more. And I know that you're like, you're a paired back cool girly. Okay. So Billy, you've got this, this new working wardrobe, your new staples. Um, is this a whole new wardrobe that you're getting for autumn winter or are you mixing and matching from previous? I I like to mix and match. I like to have my staples and then I, want to chuck in a new few season pieces you need those layering tools which is where this is where you thrive you're like layering queen I love to layer <laughs> you do it you do it really well <laughs> Thank you. but I I guess my summer wardrobe is just full of like chuck on floral ditzy dresses and to move them into now I'll be adding in like a leather jacket or a bomber jacket or a really thin um roll neck jumper underneath some of them and moving from a sandal to a trainer or I did actually try sandals and socks the other day and I didn't know if I could pull it off but I actually think I think I did it so nice so I have this look ready I am a bit nervous about doing it so talk to me about it so in my head I've got for for the for the nursery drop off <laughs> it's like my comfies you know those like knitted trousers just got like a big jumper and then I've got like a beautiful nice cashmere sock and then a beige clog um cute and I really want I want to do it more often but I feel like it's it's so so funny isn't it how something so simple and quite small yeah. can feel quite daunting yeah to leave the house in and I think we talk about those trends, particularly like in fashion, you talk about those trends as so easy and so accessible, but but it is it is like mind over matter on so many of them, isn't it? Like you're like, I can do this, I can do this. And it actually, it felt so comfortable 
and cozy. And and by the end of it, I was like, I'm super into this. It's cute. I love it. Well, that would actually work really well for my lifestyle because when I drop off baby, because she's so small, I've got to take off my shoes. And then when I'm wearing a boot or a trainer, I've got to stand there. I've got to undo it. She's crying. She doesn't want me to leave. <laughs> if I just had a clog and a, a sock on, whip them off, walk in with my socks, like this trend would work for my lifestyle. And yeah. I, I think that's the important thing, isn't that's it? To key. find what works for you. So yeah. those those investment pieces, really, you get your money's worth. Mm. And it's also like bringing in different textures that make it feel more autumnal and more wintry, like like your cashmere socks or like a heavy leather bomber jacket. Um, you know, it's it's thinking, okay, I've still got this chiffon dress, but it just needs to be toughened up a little bit for yeah. the months to come. I think textures is is my favourite part of fashion. Um, I love mixing like, you know, those really beautiful 90s slip dresses yeah, nice. um, with a really oversized chunky knit um, and then doing it with the biker boots. Yeah, it's cute. Kind of thing like that. So like I wore quite a lot of slip dresses in the summer, so I'm kind of now layering them still with big oversized jumpers mm. um, and with my jeans I'm obviously sw- swapping out the t-shirts um, and bring my my knitwear in the trick is is to get that tuck of, of the jumper so in how, the jean. how do you do that talk me through it so it's literally the the center middle bit of the knit is the only bit you need to tuck okay so because everything isn't going to fit in those jeans because <laughs> you know you've got the jeans to I'm fit adding you. another roll <laughs> well it's amazing to get a good pair of jeans that that fit your you know your your style and your shape and you yeah. feel good in and you don't want to then look at that big knitwear and be like how am I gonna I don't want to be uncomfortable yeah so you literally just need to get the center middle bit and tuck that right in where the button is Okay, I'll try it. Which is even more comfortable because then you're not getting the back of the button on your belly. Just tuck that Perfect. in. And then if you've tucked it in enough, it creates a wave over the front of the jean. And then it flows around the back. And I just find that so much more flattering. Yeah. Um, and I think it's all about knowing your proportions. It actually feels more dressed up that way, doesn't it? Like it it feels, I think and it's those small considerations that make it feel dressed up when you're moving from season to season yeah definitely those those style like little style tricks and I, I've seen other people that have done it when they've put an elastic band or a bobble um on their jacket sleeves so that you don't and then pull yeah, them I've up yeah I've seen that it looks really cool so then you don't have to continuously pull up the sleeves on your jacket if you want it to have that that rouging yeah um, and then the same with a jumper. If you want to give it a bit more of a billowy sleeve, if it's like a, a, a chunky knit, to do the same so that they hold their place. The rules have kind of gone out the window. Yeah. And it, it, it's more like fashion has become a lot more, not easier, but a lot more friendlier, I think. I agree, yeah. And I want to go somewhere where I see my friends and I see, you know, people wearing that style in a different way. And it inspires me to be like, ah, actually, I could make that work for me. Instead of it being the cookie cutter, you have to wear one trend and it has to be exactly exactly that. And I think the same as in the workplace. It's not as rigid as it was before because we're now experiencing this whole different way of getting dressed and this whole different way of working. So actually what we're incorporating now into our working look is more comfort but it's not you know it's not this maybe the same sweatpants we were wearing in the last couple of years but it is like a sweatshirt with your tailored trousers uh, or like I don't know a, a loose um less like formal kind of shirt with jeans and that feels workwear enough because that's how you feel productive it's not like you must wear I don't know, tailoring and pencil skirts and high heels into the workplace. No, it's definitely moved on. We've evolved a lot from the traditional work uniform. Yeah. And also from that one uniform for work and then one uniform for your casual. You know, you don't want to be spending all that money on two separate wardrobes. Exactly. Being able to buy a shirt, a white shirt, which is one of your staples, that you can dress up for a meeting, but also you can wear it casually with your jeans on the weekend. You know, that's a lot more. Your money's going a lot further now. Exactly. Oh, with my zip leggings. Ah, the zip leggings. (laughs) Yeah, I need them. I'm ordering them as soon as we get off this. People just really fall into habits with the way that they get dressed. And I, I absolutely used to have a uniform. It was always like a roll neck and jeans and everyone in the office would call me Steve Jobs because it would be the same, <laughs> really? the same look all the time. But it was just, it was convenient more than anything else. And now I feel like way more excited by 
kind of really out there pieces. Like I wore a really bright pink dress in the summer that I would never ordinarily wear. I love you in pink. In but hot that was pink. not my colour. Like, it well, is at least your I didn't think it was because we weren't necessarily taking those risks in dressing um, that I think people are way more comfortable and confident in doing now. Like even the small things of the the socks with the sandals or I don't know, like wearing colours and textures and layers that you wouldn't necessarily do. And I really love seeing people do that in the workplace because I think it gives them like a sense of identity. Whereas you don't have to be this like strict uniform that you did before, like you can actually put more thought into what you're wearing and how that makes you feel. Yeah, definitely. We, we've definitely moved on. I I hate being told what to wear. I hate being told <laughs> what to do. I hate being told what to wear. So my friends, every time it's a fancy dress or something like that, they know I'm not going to go. Because I just, I, <laughs> I want to invest in pieces, clothing that makes me feel good about me. Yeah. Um, and it, shows who I am yeah and if if I'm not comfortable like we said about comfort if I'm not comfortable in something I'm not going to feel good in it I'm probably not going to have a good day but that's the beauty of trends right is that you get to decide which ones you love which ones you have an affinity to like you know there's like liberty in getting to decide which version of yourself you're going to put forward that day whether that's in the workplace or at home or wherever it is like you get to decide what you put on and who you are in those clothes. And that's, it's, a, it's such a powerful tool. Oh, it's so powerful. And no matter what people say, everyone is invested in fashion at some level. Yeah. Everyone cares at some point when they are buying any piece of clothing. Everyone's making a decision. My mood changes every day. Some days I want to be like, actually, I have this funny story. When I was in, when I was in New York for Fashion Week a few years ago and... I, I thought I'm really going to be like a New York girl because not that I watch Sex and the City, but I was like, right, they're dressed up. These girls like dress up, up. So I got dressed up every day. I had like proper dresses on, like really ladylike pieces with sandals and heels and little ladylike bags. And it wasn't it wasn't me, but I thought that's what I needed to be in New York. And then as I was in the, the hotel, the guy on the door in the hotel was so sweet. Every morning he'd be like, good morning, ma'am. You look amazing. I mean, that's America. Like, oh, they're just so, so, they're so sweet, me. aren't they? And then the day I was leaving, I got into my airport outfit, which was like a tube skirt with like a thigh high split and a really big oversized sweatshirt, a bomber jacket and like chunky trainers. Wow, Billy, this is a look. <laughs> and he was like, ma'am this is you, this is you now. I was like, oh my God, this is actually me. What was I doing <laughs> trying to pretend to be something that I wasn't in the way I was getting dressed when actually I felt like a hundred times better in the clothes that that just made me feel comfortable? Yeah, because I think we can appreciate each other's style. We can yeah. appreciate the trends. But like you said, if you're wearing something that suits you and you feel so, you feel so much better about it, it's going to work so much better. Absolutely. You're going to get more wear out of it. And like, look, you're never going to, you can't get it right all the time. And I regret some things I wore last week. I regret things I wore like a month ago. You don't just have regrets of things that you wore 10, 20 years ago because your your style is con like, it just continues to evolve. Yeah. I take fashion so seriously. Do you? Because I, I, not seriously as in that sense, as in like, I have so much fun with it. Fashion is fun. Like yeah. dressing people is the best job. Like it's meeting people, making them feel good about themselves. Like I couldn't have asked for a nicer job. Um, but because I'm so like, it's how I feel that day. I feel quite, I think it's down to confidence. It is down to confidence. But don't your friends like mock you for things that you used to wear? My friends mock me constantly <laughs> to this day. Like I did a dinner party in the weekend and like my guy friends were like, are you all right? <laughs> well, from like what, what I was wearing? wearing. Oh, just like uh, a cut out knitted two piece thing that was tied <laughs> it's too around. Much for them. I love it. It's too much for them. So, but I, I've kind of got to like a stage where I laugh with them. I yeah. don't take it seriously when other people say it because I'm so serious about how confident I am and everything that those I, I'm really light hearted when anyone else says it. I think it's like you have to find the fun in fashion. And if you can't laugh at yourself and things that you wore, like mini skirts the first time round, yes, you can regret things you wore because you because you know better of how to dress things now and how to dress yourself now. But it all adds to like a good story. I think the thing is with trends is that they can feel really overwhelming. 
And fashion sometimes gives this illusion that you have to be constantly keeping up with trends. Whereas actually, they're just, they're a super useful tool to feel excited about clothing every season. You can pick and choose which ones you want to be involved in, which ones you don't, which ones feel like you, which ones you're like, it's not me, but I'm going to get that for my friends. And I and there's this really nice like way of thinking about trends now, which is I think where fashion is at, where it's it's all just self-expression. Yeah, it's nice to kind of blend them and be like, I'm going to take the biker boot from that. And then I'm also going to take a sequin top from, you know, the going out section and blend them two together because that feels more like me. Yeah. And that's the crux of all of it is is like come at the tr- come at the trends and come at the season as what feels like you. We have had so much fun talking because we could talk forever and ever. So thank you so much, Mango, for facilitating this conversation. And we hope everyone has really enjoyed talking about the trends and talking about the new season. And you can go and find out more on mango.com and across their social media. Mango Encounters, a podcast curated by Mango. Mango.